Welcome to video number two for the fourth module of assessment for the UOIT AEDT programs adult learning in a digital context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. So before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video and consider this same question you considered in the last video, but this time you have a little bit more knowledge. This slide is simply a recap of our work on learning objectives thus far. Take a moment to pause and review if necessary. Let's revisit Bloom's original taxonomy, but not as in the flower, but as in Benjamin Bloom. We met him in the last video. Hi, Benjamin. You'll recall that in 1956, he edited the first volume of the Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, the Classification of Educational Goals, a handbook to which his colleagues also contributed. So this is the original taxonomy, which served as a schema to classify educational goals and objectives. So this is where we left off in the last video. Hopefully, you have read the craft wallpaper and considered the differences between the original taxonomy and this revised work put forth by Anderson, Prathwal, and colleagues almost 45 years after the original taxonomy work. Well, the revised version is multidimensional, focusing on the types of knowledge in this dimension and the cognitive processes in this dimension. If we compare to the original hierarchical format, there are several differences. Let's first focus on the cognitive processes we will examine this cognitive process dimension through a series of questions. Take a moment to read through the questions. What is a taxonomy? Well, it refers to a classification of entities, and sometimes in a hierarchical manner. Initial thinking behind the original Bloom's taxonomy approached classifying educational outcomes in that manner. Pause and consider what cognitive processes this type of question represents. If you selected remembering, you are correct. It refers to remembering or recalling learned materials, facts, terms, and basic concepts. To what does Bloom's taxonomy refer? Well, as we discussed earlier, Bloom's taxonomy refers to more than just a way to measure educational objectives. Again, if you have not yet read the craft wallpaper, please do so now and pause the video to recap what Bloom himself thought might be achieved with the taxonomy. So what type of question does this represent? The original taxonomy would categorize this as comprehension, but we will use the revised taxonomy, and this represents understanding. Understanding is based on determining meaning of the facts, ideas, or concepts. So understanding is different from remembering that three times five is 15. To demonstrate understanding would mean that one makes meaning that three times five really represents three groups of five, and that the total is 15. How do we incorporate Bloom's taxonomy into our assessments and general planning of learning? Well, we could use the resources that you hopefully read and discovered tools to assist you in selecting appropriate wording that assists you in identifying what you hope your students will know or be able to do by the end of the course. Alternatively, we can use the resources to consider instruction. Imagine learning experiences where you are only posing questions that reflect remembering or understanding. How might you encourage higher order thinking? How about asking students to apply a concept to a new situation? Which is exactly what this type of question represents. Applying refers to taking new knowledge or skills and using the new knowledge and or skills in new situations to hopefully solve a problem of some sort. Consider how these individual questions on this PowerPoint slide are different or the same from the others. 
Hopefully, you've figured out that the questions on these slides reflect the various cognitive processes within the revised taxonomy table. And what type of question does this particular question represent? Because this question is asking you to consider the various concepts we have discussed thus far into smaller components for the purpose of comparing, this could be considered an analyzing type of question. It is addressing higher cognitive processes and it nudges students to move beyond recall or recognition. So what do you think? What kind of learning would happen if Bloom's was not considered? What types of questions or tasks or assessments might we tend to incorporate? By incorporating revised Bloom's into our learning objectives, assessments, and instruction, we hopefully create richer learning experiences as compared to learning experiences that might simply incorporate recall of information without context. This type of question could be considered to be evaluative in nature. Because you are discriminating between ideas and making a decision, you are reasoning, judging. Again, one might argue it might be an application. However, the word determine implies that some type of reasoning will occur. Hopefully you realize that each of the questions you have considered in this video have a place and reason. When scaffolding learning experiences, aim for higher order thinking. However, there will be times when remembering or understanding is more appropriate. This type of question, once again, represents an evaluative type of question because you are asked to make a judgment. So if I asked you to design a task that represents the creating level of cognitive processes, this would represent creating. And the reason it is creating is because you would need to pull the elements of what you have learned to make something new. So now let's look at the knowledge dimension, a new addition to the revised taxonomy. This refers to the kind of knowledge to be learned or the knowledge dimension. So the revised work refers to both the kind of knowledge and the processes used to learn or the cognitive processes. Before we go forward, pause the video and think about how these types of knowledge might be described. Consider the differences between the following types of knowledge. Also review the craft wall paper and the other resources for this week for a deeper explanation. There are specific examples of how to use the table on two of the websites listed, so please take a look. So let's try to identify the different types of knowledge based on the knowledge dimension. What type of knowledge might the knowledge of a learning objective represent? This is factual because it has to do with terminology and general vocabulary related to planning the learning experiences. What about this? What type of knowledge might this represent and why? Please feel free to pause and go back and review the types of knowledge frame. This was intended to be conceptual because it refers to knowledge of a planning framework. Planning with the end in mind requires knowledge of how the basic elements such as learning objectives, assessment, instruction fit together within this model of planning. What about summative assessment? What type of knowledge does this represent? Once again, this reflects factual knowledge because this refers to basic terminology or element of a particular subject area. What about this? Now this is tricky because we already talked about the model of backwards design. But in this case, the intention of this example of knowledge is procedural because it is referring to knowing how to do something. It is tricky because it is somewhat out of context. However, if the knowledge has to do with how to do something, a technique or a method, then it could be a type of procedural knowledge. What type of knowledge does this represent and why? Again, it is out of context, but where might this type of knowledge best fit and why? Yes, it is metacognitive because it reflects knowledge of one's own cognition or what one knows. Meta refers to thinking about thinking. Pause the video and read this example. Now let's start with the cognitive process this task represents. Well, editing involves some type of judgment or evaluation. If Mr. Lerner is going to evaluate Ms. Lerner's assessment plan before she submits it, 
What type of knowledge does he have to have? Pause and take a look back at the video or taxonomy table to help you. Okay, hopefully you'll see that if Mr. Lerner is going to evaluate, then he will need to have an awareness of the criteria to evaluate Ms. Lerner's plan. Knowledge of how the criteria fit together would be conceptual. So let's use the revised taxonomy. Again, in the original taxonomy, we only considered the cognitive processes. However, the revised version asks us to consider both cognitive process in this dimension, but also the types of knowledge within this dimension. So Mr. Lerner was editing or making a judgment which could be evaluated. In order to evaluate, he would need to have an understanding of the criteria which would be conceptual in nature because it requires putting the factual elements together. We can place this example here. Pause to take a moment and think about this and why. Why and how would we use this table in planning learning objectives and instructional experiences? So please consider the following questions. So to recap, this video addressed the revised taxonomy table, which evolved from Bloom's original taxonomy. Thanks for watching.